ओम भूर भुव स्वतरवरेण्यम भरो दीवशीम धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओम शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज वीडियो नंबर टेन This is a series of Upanishadic explanations regarding Brahma and all Vedantic terms. In this video, I start description about microcosm and macrocosm. one of the most significant symbols of dharma both personal and impersonal is om pronounced and often written om the goal which all the vedas declare which all austerities aim at and which men desire when they lead the life of continence we will tell you briefly it is om this syllable om is indeed dharma this syllable is the highest whosoever knows the symbol this syllable obtains whatever he desires this is the best sport this is the highest sport whose whoso knows this sport is adored in the world of dharma the mandukya upanishad discusses brahma through om om the syllable is all this patanjali states in the yoga sutras om is the signifying word of iswara the word as written in sanskrit consist of three letters a u and m these are called the three quarters or letters of om there is a fourth quarter denoted by the prolonged undifferentiated sound m which comes at the end as the word is pronounced this is the symbol of nirguna dharma or pure consciousness that which is partless incomprehensible non dual all bliss and which brings about the cessation of the phenomenal world is om the fourth and verily the same as atma he who knows the merges his self in the self the first three quarters or letters of om apply to the relative universe a called vasanara is the first quarter it functions in the waking state u card tejasa is the second quarter it functions in the dream state and m card prajna is the third quarter it functions in the state of dreamless sleep vasanara is the experiencer of gross tejasa of the subtle and prajna of the causal the fourth quarter which is reality which in reality is indescribable in terms of relations but is called the fourth only with reference to the other three is turiya or pure consciousness which permeates all the states and is also transcendent let us now try to develop the meaning of what has been outlined in the two preceding paragraphs all our relative experiences are included in the waking state the dream state and the state of deep sleep in the waking state we experience through the gross body and the sense organs of the gross world in dreams we experience subtle objects through mind or the subtle body the causal world we experience in dreamless sleep when the mind and the sense organs do not function yogins 
even in the waking state can experience the subtle and causal worlds which have objective reality one must use the gross body to experience the gross world the subtle body to experience the subtle world and the causal body to experience the causal world therefore corresponding to the three worlds the gross the subtle and the causal there are three states namely waking dreaming and deep sleep and also three bodies namely the gross the subtle and the causal but it must not be forgotten that consciousness is atma which is always present in the three states and forms their substratum when atma uses the gross body for the experience of the gross world it is given the technical name of viswa when it uses the subtle body for the experience of the subtle world it is called tejasa and when the same atma uses the causal body for the experience of the causal world it is called prajna atma is one and without is second it is pure dharma it is bodiless when associated with the three upadhis it is given three different names free from any upadhi it is dharma the absolute the abo is a description of the microcosm or individual soul the same is true of the macrocosm or totality of soul this atma is dharma as in the case of the individual soul dharma also functions in the relative universe in the three states in association with the three upadhis and is known for three technical names with reference to the gross upadhi dharma is called virat with reference to the subtle upadhi hirne garbha or prajapati and with reference to the causal upadhi sutratma or prana but as has already been stated all these terms are often interchanged in the earlier vedanta books <coughs> there is no intrinsic difference between the microcosm and the macrocosm a forest macrocosm is nothing but an aggregate of individual trees microcosm a lake macrocosm is an aggregate of small portions of water microcosm but both microcosm and macrocosm possess their own distinctive individuality the mac macrocosm though an aggregate of individual units is not a mere abstraction this can be better explained by the illustration of cells a living body consists of innumerable cells each of which possesses a distinctive individuality the totality of cells the body has however its own independent individuality each cell has a distinct life and purpose of its own it lives by extracting from its immediate environment what is necessary for its growth and nutrition but this work has for its end the ultimate nutrition and building up of the whole body of which each individual cell forms a very small but necessary distinct unit a gross living body consist of aggregate of its living cells likewise the aggregate of all gross individual bodies constitute virat the aggregate of all individual subtle bodies hirne garbha and the aggregate of all causal bodies sutratma or prana the gross upadhi consists of the totality of gross bodies in other words the instrument through which brahma functions in the gross world is the totality of gross body the subtle upadhi consists of the totality of subtle bodies in the subtle world brahma's instrument is the totality of subtle bodies or minds the causal upadhi consists of the totality of causal bodies when brahma functions in the causal world it uses the totality of causal bodies as its instrument 
The subtle and causal bodies may also refer to advanced souls in different states of perfection. They are the media through which the higher attributes of the Lord such as knowledge, power, love, purity and compassion find expression in the universe. The Lord may be likened to the center, the very heart of the universe and the great souls to the arteries that meet there. By then the life blood is carried to all parts of the universe. It has been stated before that the Lord when associated with the upadhi of the causal bodies is called Sutratma. The word means literally the thread soul, that is to say the thread like subtle substance that joins together all the different individuals, man, gods, animals and inorganic beings. It is like the protoplasmic substance which by its minute threads passing through the cell walls unites the cells in a living organism. It is he who pervades all by me in my unmanifested form are all things in this universe pervaded. All that has been stated above applies also in the case of Maheswara, the great Lord. He represents the totality of all Brahmas. These Brahmas sometimes are compared to mere bubbles that appear and disappear in the ocean of great cause. Each one of them is born, lives for a while and ultimately dies. Even when one Brahma with his Brahmaloka disappears, others continue to exist and function. The merging of one Brahma into Maheswara after his lifespan is completed is called a partial dissolution. Khanda Paralaya The merging of all Brahmas after unaccountable ages into Maheswara is called a great dissolution. Mahaparalaya each destruction partial or complete is followed by a new creation, the systole and diastole of the cosmic heart never stops. The Upanishads often say that only when a man feels this passion for all forms of life from the blade of grass to Burma is he qualified to be a seeker of liberation from the standpoint of the absolute all manifestations are impermanent and transitory Burma alone is the immutable witness of the births and deaths in the creation and that Burma dwells in each male's heart as his inmost soul synthesis we have already spoken of the two aspects of Brahma, Nirguna and Saguna. Nirguna Brahma is characterized by an absence of all attributes. It is pure consciousness and the immutable foundation of the universe. Again, in association with Maya, Brahma appears as a Saguna Brahma, which from the standpoint of the Absolute is mutable and impermanent. The knowledge of the former is called the higher knowledge and that of the latter the lower knowledge. The higher knowledge brings about immediate liberation resulting in the utter cessation of all sufferings and the attainment of supreme bliss. The lower knowledge leads to the realization of the position of Burma and thus paves the way for ultimate liberation. It offers the higher, highest happiness in the material world, but still it is not immortality. The attainment of the higher knowledge or pravidya is the goal of the spiritual life, but the lower knowledge or apravidya is not to be neglected or despised. As long as a man is conscious of the ego and the outside world and as long as he takes this to be real, so long must he cultivate this knowledge. The Bhagavad Gita says that if a man who is identified with the body follows the way of the unmanifest, he only quotes misery. The Mandaka Upanishad exhorts the pupil 
to cultivate both the higher knowledge and the lower knowledge the fetters of the heart are broken and doubts are resolved and all works cease to bear fruit when he is beheld who is both high and low as we have seen above brahma in association with maya becomes the maheshwara his glories have been described in the upanishads he is the ruler of all the controller of all and the inner guide of all beings the sun moon and stars obey his commands under his wise providence the seasons and years follow each other in orderly succession he is the thunderbolt ready to be heard as at a transgressors of his laws he is whom brahma brahmins and akshatriyas are mere food and death itself is condiment he covers the universe and also extends beyond this universal aspect of the lord has been described in most vivid language in the 11th chapter of the bhagavad gita in arjuna's hymn to shri krishna i behold thee with myriads of arms and bellies with myriads of faces and eyes i behold the infinite in form on every side but i see not thy end nor thy middle nor thy beginning O Lord of the universe, O universal form, into the enter this host of gods and some in fear extol thee with folded hands and bands of rishis and siddhas exclaim, May there be peace and praise thee with splendid hymns. The Lord describes himself in the Gita as the mighty world destroying time. This form embodied the vast extent of creation, preservation, and destruction, past, present, and future, gods, men, animals, and inorganic things. One blessed with the exalted visions, behold all this simultaneously and in one instant. Naturally, mortal eyes become dazed with the manifestation of so much glory, power, and Splendor, Arjuna, terrified by the spectacle, obtained peace of mind only when the Lord withdrew his effulgence and appeared before him again as the personal God whom he had always loved and cherished in his heart. There is another aspect of Sabna Brahma which is tender, gentle and redemptive. He is bliss. The Chandogya Upanishad described him as the refuge of love and the lord of love. O Rudra, let thy gracious face protect me forever. The Lord, the giver of blessing, the adorable God, by revering him, one attains eternal peace. The seers of the Upanishads addressed him as their father and prayed to him to lead them to the other side of Maya. The various forms which Saguna Brahma assumes for the welfare of the devotees have been known and worshipped all over the world as the Father in heaven, Allah, the great Jivoha, the just, Vishnu, Shiva, and Brahma, emphasizing the different aspects of the great Lord Maheshwara. A more tender and human manifestation of the great Lord is seen in his incarnations. The Avtaras, the Bhagavad Gita says that whenever virtue declines and vice prevails, the Godhead with the help of Maya takes a human form for the protection of virtuous and the chastisement of the wicked man naturally understand God better when he appears to them in a human form. They can then establish with him a sweet human relationship. They can regard him as father, mother, friend or beloved and pour out their heart's love for him. This intense love of God consumes the draws of lust, greed, passion, anger, pride, selfishness, and other impurities of the devotee's mind and enables it to acquire one-pointedness. The mind thus purified can then comprehend the absolute. 
as already stated nirguna brahma and saguna brahma are not fundamentally different entities it is maya that makes the difference as a stick laid across water seem to divide it sri rama krishna compared nirguna brahma to the infinite ocean and saguna brahma to blocks of ice intense cold breeze freezes the water of the ocean into solid ice again the blazing heat of the sun melts the ice into water like wise on account of the intense glow of the aspirant dharma with the help of maya embodies itself and becomes god with the form again the discrimination and knowledge of the aspirant like the heat of the sun melts the form into the indefinable absolute when a bird to use another illustration of sri rama krishna gets tired by continuously flying in the sky it seeks a tree to rest its weary wings wings like why is a seer of truth when not in communion with pure brahma and why the embodied form of the godhead the bhagavatam says even the sages who are delighted with the realization of their inmost self and who have cut all the bonds of the world show for hari love which is utterly free from motives such as his wonderful glory Maya exercises its bewitching power upon the unillumined but the sages whose minds are enlightened by the knowledge of Brahma see in the relative universe created by Maya the manifestation of Brahma to them everything even Maya is Brahma they do not deny the forms of God and the creation whether contemplating the absolute or participating in the relative they see brahma alone everywhere in the undifferentiated absolute as well as in names and forms maya cannot delude them sri rama krishna used to say that to accept names and forms divorced from the reality of brahma is agyana ignorance to see brahma alone and deny the world is philosophical knowledge gyana but to see brahma everywhere in names and forms in good and evil pain and pleasure life and death as well as in the depths of meditation reason is vigyana a supremely rich knowledge endowed with vigyana blessed souls immune with brahma in meditation and devote themselves when not meditating to the service of the world <coughs> so i end this video here next video will start with methods of instruction symbols Thank you for watching this video. Namaskar.